I didn't lose weight during my year in Wally Alive. I was in the program for a year, but my weight loss happened later because this work mm-hmm. doesn't just stop. You take the philosophies and you keep implementing it. And it happened later and I was able to keep it off. That was like the big ticket item for me is I was able to maintain it. Hey, it's Nicole Kellerman Worth, CEO of WildBeAlive.com, where we help women get on the same team as their bodies so they can feel and look their best. When a woman realizes how badass her body is, she feels alive and is no longer afraid to create the life she's always wanted. I know this to be true because it's happened to me and thousands of our clients. Welcome to the journey of getting on the same team as your body. Hello, sisters. So as we continue this month talking about why I have shifted and started talking about weight loss again and having a really candid, honest conversation around this term weight loss, (laughs) Um, I wanted to bring in um, a mentor who has a a unique philosophy on why she came into Wildly Alive, what her intentions were, what has happened with her and her body image and how she has felt with her body. Because, you know, as you listen to all four of this month's podcast, I want you to get an idea of different perspectives of how this philosophy works and um, really the, the shame that could come in with the term weight loss that I understand I played into for a very long time and will take responsibility for that. But as I've said, um, I had a lot of healing that I need to do because of that as well. So I want to introduce Aaliyah. Uh, Aaliyah and I go back really far. Um, when was, when, do you remember what year? 2017, 2018? No, 2017. It was 2017. Yeah. So amazing. And so this is the thing is, um, Aaliyah came to my first retreat in 2018 and I felt a deep soul connection with Aaliyah, especially more at that retreat, more than anything, like energetically we got together and I would just, I felt so deeply connected to her soul. And, um, Yeah, I love, I love her so much and she has so much wisdom to share. And I was so excited when she said that she wanted to be a mentor. I was totally honored. And so I'm excited for you to learn from Aaliyah today. She has so much to offer. Um, So yeah, Aaliyah, uh, do you want to share with us like what, what made you want to jump in? to Wildly Alive in whatever rendition. And the rendition that it was at that point, I think was Wildly Alive Weight Loss. Yes. Yeah. First of all, so just telling us a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, first, I love you. Thank you <laughs> for having me. I'm really excited to talk about this. Um, yes, I do believe it was Wildly Alive Weight Loss at the time that I joined. And then like the rebranding happened as I was in the program. And I had been watching, you know, Creepy Neighbor for a while. I'd been in the playground and was watching the challenges and participating in the Wildly Life challenges that were going on at the time. And what drew me in was like, your philosophy was just so different. I had like gained weight in like a year where I gained like 30 to 40 pounds. I was under a lot of stress. It was like my last year in my undergrad. And there was just a lot of factors that contributed to that. And previously I'd been doing, you know, like I would do a diet and I'd lose weight or I'd start working out again and I'd lose weight. And it's just always like, do this, the weight loss, you know, occurred. It was very easy. And whenever I tried to lose this weight, it wasn't happening. I went to all all the extreme diets. I got rid of carbs. I did, you know, high protein, low carb. I did all the things and I did a more balanced way. And like you eat this and you eat a little bit of rice and and nothing was working. It wasn't budging. Like I would lose maybe four or five pounds and then it would come right back. And Mm -hmm. I was getting frustrated and I decided to just kind of ignore it. And it stuck with me like for three years. And that's kind of when I started to be in the playground and really just observe in the beginning. That's kind of my process. And I really appreciated that it was more about living your life 
and creating a life wildly alive, right? So wildly alive that you don't need the cookies, you don't need the binge eating. And it just kind of struck me like this is something different. Like you didn't preach mm-hmm. that I needed to like cut out carbs to lose weight or I needed to exercise 20 times a month for me to lose weight because I was just so turned off by all of that. Like I just didn't even want to think about it because I just didn't have the willpower at that time. Like at that time, I was just like out of willpower. And it's like if everyone tells you if you don't have the willpower, then you're not good enough. You're not doing it right. You're never going to lose the weight. And this seemed to be like inviting me into a different way of looking at my weight and my body. And I decided to jump in. Like we had a call and you were doing a year long program and you did like you asked me about like my weight and like or like my issue. And I kind of talked about that weight and I was feeling frustrated about it. And you told me like if we do go on this journey, you can definitely want to lose the weight, but it can't be the driving factor. And that like put me at ease even more because there was just no pressure to lose the weight. Mm-hmm. So I feel like those were all the different things. It's just, I knew this was going to be different and that I needed support along the way. And that, that, that like, that was what sold me on it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And I think, you know, like this has been like the perpetual theme with this month's podcast is the desire can be there, but you know, having it be something that you need to be happy. That's where the problem lies. That's where my problem lied when I was in that place too, is yes, I did lose weight. Like that was very clear. I did it through a very masculine diet culture approach, but I thought that if I lost weight, then I would be happy. And so my unhappiness was driving the motivation to lose weight. And this is the problem because an unhappy journey never results in a happy ending. And so when you can release this intense desire to lose the weight, it's you start to loosen and you start to also realize that life can be good and I can be happy. Even if my body doesn't look a certain way, because I lost the weight through my unhappiness an unhappy journey results in an unhappy ending ending. and I lost the weight and I was so miserable. And, but Mm -hmm. then I couldn't blame my body anymore. I couldn't blame the weight anymore. And then I was like, well, Oh, okay. Well, I'll just get a boob job. That's the problem is the problem is that my boobs aren't big enough. And so then I did that Mm -hmm. and I still wasn't happy, (laughs) you know? And so like this, feeling that you had coming into the wildly alive world where you realize that weight loss is a byproduct of being in this container, but it's not something that is heavily forced. There's no weigh-ins, there's no before and after pictures. There's none of this like weight focus Mm -mm. when, yeah, when you release that is when you can step into philosophies that feel body set body centered philosophies that feel really good. And there's not this like expectation. Cause I mean, I don't know, like expectation seems to really mess it up. Like think about relationships and, and things and having this like high expectation for something to happen in a certain amount of time. Nobody yeah. likes that kind of pressure. No, you know, it, it's it like doesn't your, work. Your it pushes doesn't. it away. I feel like expectations a lot of the time, like, yes, have the desire, but if it's too strong, it really just pushes it away. Mm -hmm. If it's Mm -hmm. the only thing that you can focus on without releasing the pressure on it. Right. Right. So, okay. So then take us through your wildly alive journey from there, um, like with your body and, and things like that. Okay. So as I said, I gained like more weight than I had had ever gained in my life and I was at a much heavier place but through my journey like in Wildly Alive I learned to just kind of get back into who I was and what I enjoy and focusing on myself while not really thinking about the weight anymore so it allowed me time to just love my body for what it was doing for me Mm -hmm. and I do have some like health issues I I have um a weak right hip because of a lot of surgeries that I did as a child. And so I always knew that like keeping the weight, like that's what doctors told me, like, you can't be too heavy. You can't be too heavy. It's too bad for your joints. Right. So there was that play in my mind. Um, 
but I never like shifted the focus of like, how can I care for my body because it's good for me because it'll make me feel strong because it's going to allow me to Mm. enjoy movement for all my days into like my old age and that I won't need like a total hip replacement surgery, like what my doctors told me. And so, you know, grounding into that and really just looking at caring for my body and not how much it weighs or what it looks like for the purpose of just really loving myself and taking care of this body that I was blessed with in whatever shape or form that it is, helped me transition into, okay, like I can add in some movement. I love the piece about just like adding in 10 minutes of movement. It doesn't have to be extreme. Baseline goals, set it, you know, eye rolling mm-hmm. easy, like three times a week, 10 minutes, that's fine. And with that, you slowly, gradually build it up because you start to enjoy the movement. You start enjoying, like feeling like I have so much more energy and it builds up, the momentum builds up. And having, you know, a focus on those deeper three that we always talk about in Wildly Alive, that just, you know, right there, first of all, like, why do I even want this? Mm -hmm. Losing weight is a part of it, but why do you actually want to like lose this weight? Like, what is it? good how is it good for you in all aspects right and so tapping into your deeper why like I want to feel strong in my body like having those deep reasons not I want to just look good you know in the summer or whatever it is it's more about I want to feel healthy I want to feel strong I want to feel like I can go hiking like 10 miles and feel like I can do it and I can do the whole hike and be good and feel good afterwards so it was more about really just giving my body that kind of love and respect for what she was doing already and then nurturing her with more movement and um, eating foods that felt right to me, like without restricting anything. Like I love bread. I can eat bread, but you know, it's fine. Like eat what you love, but also just tune into how you're feeling. And that's where the mindset shift started to happen. And I don't feel like I didn't lose weight during my year in Wildly Alive. I was in the program for a year, but my weight loss happened later because this work mm-hmm. doesn't just stop. You take the philosophies and you keep implementing it and it happened later and I was able to keep it off. That was like the big ticket item for me is I was able to maintain it because mm-hmm. I'd released that pressure. It came off slowly, it came off gradually. It wasn't like a speed, you know, like just dropped. And then I was already doing like, I was hiking like twice a week. I was eating food that felt good. I was still like eating burgers that I love. But times like there are times where I was just like, I really want a really good salad. It's that balance between letting yourself have the things that you want. And then also tuning into when you're really craving something healthy or if I'm like tuning in, if I'm um, eating because there's something else happening and tuning into the emotion beneath that feeling. So these were all the tools that I picked up and I continued to practice them after my time in Wildly Alive. And I kind of kept popping back in every once in a while because it's a good place to be. (laughs) So I didn't like, I didn't leave after that year, right? Like I stayed connected in the sisterhood, in the group. And yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So this is like an ebb and flow and everyone's journey is different, right? Is, you know, the weight can occur within the year. It can happen outside of the year, you know, with wildly alive mastery, you know, is kind of what we're speaking to here. And it's just really when, when there's not this intense need for it to happen by a certain time, then it happens for life. And this is the other thing. And we all need to accept this is that our bodies are going to ebb and flow. This is important for you to hear. And I feel like diet culture tells us that once you lose the weight, then you have nothing to worry about. It's so easy. And, you know, like I know that I did this a lot. It's like, oh, if I just, I'll just hate myself thin, right? This is a whole idea. I'll just diet, or just do this cleanse for 30 days and then I'll lose the weight and then I'll keep it off. That's all I need. I just need to keep, I'll just, I just need to suffer for the month and then I'll keep it off. And the, the raw reality of it is your body is going to ebb and flow and change. It's going to, you just need to trust that it's not, you're not always going to be the same size for the rest of your life. I'm not saying that we need to just get old and fat. That's not what I'm saying. But as we go through life, 
and we go through a challenging experience. Say we lose somebody we love, we move across the country, we lose a job that we weren't expecting to lose. Oftentimes when we're under an immense amount of stress, you know, a global pandemic, for example, oftentimes when we're under a lot of stress, yeah, our bodies will reflect that stress. It will reflect that stress. And you're not a bad person because you gained weight during, you know, when, when the shutdown was going on or when, you know, like you're not a bad person for that. It's normal. It's normal. Many people did it. And there was all of these, you know, memes going around about like the COVID-15 or whatever. And it's like, ha ha. Yeah. I can take a joke, but also like all the weight is doing is saying like my body, your body is saying we're under a lot of stress right now. Yeah. This is intense. And to me that I appreciate about, because for if women in the wild, the alive container, it shows up on our body. Okay. For other people, it shows up in other ways because everybody has a vice. Everybody has a vice. They're gaming too much. They're working too much. They're drinking too much. They're smoking too much weed. Like everybody has a vice within the wild, the alive container. The thing that is harder for where it shows up on our body is it's a physical manifestation that people can see and judge. Mm-hmm. I get that. That's the part that sucks. But I know for me, I would rather it show up on my body as some extra fat than all of a sudden have this intense problem with alcohol yeah, or like shopping. Right. And like all of a sudden my, you know, credit cards are all maxed out because I had a really stressful two years. So mm-hmm. I would rather have this physical manifestation that's right here on me every day than something that you can sometimes like just Tied not look at. Back. Yeah, you exactly. It's physical. It's here. And it's your body saying, well, can we to release the stress? Can we go for a walk? Can we do some deep breathing? You know, can we take a bath? Like, can we do things to help manage the stress? And so this is normal. And there are women, there was one woman a, a long time ago who lost a significant w- amount of weight within the year long container. And then she got married and it was not a good marriage. Um, There was a lot of emotional abuse, manipulation, and she gained a lot of it back. Mm -hmm. And then she came back to Wildly Alive after she had gained it back. And she felt all this shame that she gained the weight back. And I'm like, look, like she was out of the toxic marriage. She got out of the toxic marriage. Thank goodness. You know, emotionally abusive relationships could be one of the hardest to get out of because there's not like physical, you know, and she got out and she came back in and she felt a lot of shame for gaining weight. And I'm like, you just went through like a super, super stressful few years. Like that was intense. You thought this person was for you. Like you were so happy you got married and then you guys started settling in and all of a sudden things started to go South and you tried to hold on. And you know, you probably ate to try to keep yourself calm. Like cut yourself a little bit of slack here. And now she has lost the weight again. And so it's like, there's like, there's nothing wrong. There's Mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. All it is, again, it's just your body saying, Hey, something's out of alignment here. And when you are in the space to come back to her, you'll recalibrate, you'll realign. And if you continue to gain, it's, it opens up a conversation within of like, how am I not caring for myself? Or what is my, if my body could speak right now, what would she say? And that's, I think, I think it's a gift. And I know a lot of women are like, it's not a gift. It's annoying. I hate it. But it's like, this is your journey, right? Like this is your journey and your body is here to be one of your biggest teachers. And that acne, in chronic pain, in illness, in, you know, joint pain. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of funny, like talking about ebb and flow. I always, you know, felt like I didn't join Wildly Alive, even though weight loss was in the name, I didn't join it for weight loss. And at the end of my year, like my testimonial was so much about like, it just brought me back to myself. Like it just, Mm. I became a person that is like I'm back to being me. I'm I'm happy. I know how to like bring happiness back into my life. I felt I'd lost myself. Like I had let go of just 
making myself a priority and making time for myself. And that was like a huge win. That's not something to underestimate at all. And it just put me on this path of continuing to strive for, you know, self-development and really looking at all those places within myself. And, you know, funnily enough, like a couple of months ago, I did, I had gained weight again. And this time it was a different trigger because the first time I went through Wadley Life, mm-hmm. it wasn't that big of a deal. Cause I'd, I'd had three years to like kind of sit in that weight and I was just kind of let go of losing it. And it was just like, whatever. But when I gained the weight back a little bit, it kind of struck a new trigger for me. And mm-hmm. which was interesting because I got to actually face this weight loss issue from what I would feel a lot of women would come in already feeling when they want to lose the weight. Because mm-hmm. for the first time ever, I'd actually thought like I'd be happy when I I lose these 10 pounds again. Like I had that thought and I'd never had it before. And that was like a major like light bulb moment for me. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> there's something to look at here like this. I need to look at this. There's something going on. And um, I checked in with myself because I knew I'd gone like through a job search that was very difficult. And I was going through moving and not moving. There were a lot of things. And again, like have grace with yourself, right? Like don't be mad at yourself for maybe coping in an old way that like I used to use or the food showed up on my body in a physical manifestation, right? And I had to check in and go back to like the basics of the tools that I learned in Wildly Alive. And that that was just like really looking at, have I been moving my body to purely because I want to feel good in my body and not have this joint pain and feel strong. And like, no, I've let that go. I haven't been doing that. And also my joint pain has been, you know, through the roof and all of these things. And then checking in with how I was eating, I was eating things that weren't good for me. Like I would always have a stomach ache afterwards. I wasn't feeling good. I was feeling bloated. And that's not because like you shouldn't eat fast food or you shouldn't do this. It's because it's because of how it makes you feel. And so when you really focus on how it makes you feel, it's so much easier to then like, okay, I need to like eat things that make me feel good. When I eat this, I feel so energized. I feel full. I feel, I feel really good. And that helps you make that choice. So I looked at it in the eye and then I kind of released that I need to lose weight because I was getting into that point of thinking about a restrictive diet. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, (laughs) I'm just going to forget about this. And I'm going to tap back into the basics of making my body feel good. And I have not like weighed myself, but I've been moving. I've gotten back to moving in ways that I love. Like I love dancing. I love walking in nature doing the things that I like to do. I don't like gyms. I never have. And now I never have to go to a gym if I don't want to. Like, that's the thing. You don't have to do a specific thing. You can do the things that feel right to you. And then I just started focusing on eating in ways that nourish my body. And kind of the theme for this month is nourishment. Like I consider what I'm going to eat. Is this going to make me feel good? How will I feel after? Is it going to give me energy? And like, when I think about it with intentionality, that helps me make the choice of what I want to eat. And I'm still eating rice. I'm eating bread. I'm eating everything. It's just more of how can I really be intentional and while I'm eating, be a food lover. And so doing that in the last month, I felt better. Like I've said, I haven't weighed myself, but I'm feeling better. I've released that again. And that was like, that was a major win for me is just to get to, okay, it's okay. Like I am moving my body again. I'm doing yoga. I'm feeling good. I'm stretching my joints and my legs and I feel stronger. And that's the important thing. And I'm pretty sure that I have lost some of it at the very least, just because of how I feel in my clothes, but that's not even the point, right? Like the, the gain was Mm -hmm. really like just stepping back into how I'm feeling in my body. And that was it is I wasn't feeling good. And that was the main thing. Right. It's like so simple. Like feel good in your body. Yeah. Feel good (laughs) in your body. You know, like the tagline. It sounds really silly, but Mm -hmm. it is that simple sometimes. Like I just wasn't feeling good. Right. 
Right. And like the whole, you know, the tagline is get on the same team as your body. So you feel and look your best. Right. And so the thing about that is it's kind of multi-layered is that the truth is, is that when you feel good, when you feel good, and we've all had these moments where maybe we go and get our hair blown out, or we just get a manicure, or we get like this outfit that we've always wanted. When we feel good, we look good. It's an energy. Yes. Oh, yes. It is an energy. It is not an actual size of your body. And we've seen this all the time. And we talk about this in the My Body Rocks class, which is all about like women's relationships with their bodies is we can walk down a street and we can see a woman who is not like the standard of beauty, meaning white and thin. We can see her walking down the street and she is like rocking it. Like mm-hmm. she is rocking her curves and she is flaunting it and she is just, Mm-mm-mm-mm. and you're like, what? Like <laughs> you take a double take. You're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like what? Like I want some of that confidence. Damn, yeah. she looks so good, you know? And then we can see another woman who is like really the standard American beautiful size who's thin and tiny and she's walking around with her head down and she's insecure and you know like she doesn't feel good she doesn't look good right it is an energy but then again like another piece of that like again like in the back seat is like as you feel good in your body and you it, you feel good and you look good then if your body is designed if your body is holding more weight than it's comfortably having then you will release it it will release eventually yeah. and so it's like you know you were really speaking to that is like what i was really shooting for was feeling better the weight helped me realize that i haven't been eating in ways that make me feel good. I had a stomach ache every time I ate, you know? And so again, like, this is why I say the weight is a gift. And a lot of people get so annoyed by that. But once you start really learning these philosophies, then it's like, you always have this person. Yeah. Kind of like, again, like your body is your friend. It's like, we know we have that friend who will like, tell it, tell it to us straight. Like, even Mm -hmm. if, she knows it's going to kind of hurt our feelings. Like she's going to like, I see that as your body. And like the extra Mm. weight is like, Hey girl, like you are not taking care of yourself. And clearly like I'm showing you that Mm -hmm. and you deserve, you deserve to feel good. And so I will continue to speak to you after symptom, after symptom, you know, like all these things start racking up in your health. Your health continues to be an issue for you. You're constantly not feeling good. It's like your body's saying, just let's take care. Let's sleep a little bit more. Let's drink a little bit more water, you know, like let's have a vegetable, you know, (laughs) now and then, (laughs) right? Like it's, it's really, it, again you're like having a good relationship with your body and seeing that it's a conversation and seeing that she has wisdom to offer is such an important part of wildly alive because she is wise she does have things to say and she says it through feeling good feeling bad acne you know like bloated gassy stomach aches like she is speaking to you And it's just a matter of you like learning that language a little bit. So then you can adjust, oh, when I eat that, that makes me feel bad. So maybe I'll eat less of that. You know, it's not like, can't have those carbs. It's like, well, if every time, yeah, if every time I eat pasta or pizza or cereal, I, I feel bad, then it's like, maybe my body doesn't feel good with like high amounts of gluten or gluten at all. And Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's really a conversation. Yes, definitely. I think that's like one of the major things also that I learned through my time in Wildly Alive is that conversation that that ongoing connection with my body. I feel like before that, I really wasn't tuning in to what she was telling me. Mm And I remember, especially with my hip pain, every time like I talk to you about it, you'd be like, well, what is this? Like, this is a gift. Think about like your body is reminding you to do some stretches or your physical therapy. And I'm like, oh, please. Like, this is not what I need right now. Like, I don't want to do my physical therapy. (laughs) And it is true. It's like, you can take it as a message, as a little hint. And just remember that 
your body is speaking to you and being able to actually tune in and listen is a gift. It really is. It's, it's a process. It's a process to get there, but eventually it happens and it's such a gift. Yeah. Yeah. It really is really, really is. So as we're wrapping up here, well, hold on before we wrap up something that I always ask the mentors is what, made you want to jump into a men- mentorship? It's a really good question. <laughs> I was really excited that you were doing like this mentorship container. So I was one of the first, you know, mentors to join in the first year. And I feel like I've just gotten so much out of Wildly Alive and embodying these principles that it's just such a pleasure to also be able to help spread that message and support other women on this journey I think it's such an important message and I like even in like you know because we make such great connections in our online supportive community but then I also see people in my real life who don't have these philosophies or don't embody it and they're not yet open to even hearing it and I feel really sad that they're still kind of stuck in that that different like all or nothing mentality or diet culture that's not serving them. And I'm really glad that I just get to be a part of this community that eventually will grow into even more. And I get to help women who are like me or, you know, are struggling with the same things into knowing that they can love their body in whatever shape and form it is. And it's such a deep journey of growth. I feel like it's the journey never stops and that's what's important is that you're growing and growing through it and getting to feel better at the same time yeah yeah I know we're so happy to have you and you know if you ever want to jump into our new course that's coming out called wildly alive weight loss or you ever feel like you want to jump into wildly alive mastery you will be able to experience Aaliyah firsthand She's yeah. very active in, yeah, in the, in the sisterhood, we have really, we have like accountability groups that mentors lead and coaching calls that mentors lead. It's really, it's really, really awesome. So you'd be able to experience lots of Aaliyah time in there as well, if you are digging her. Um, okay. So thinking about an awakening activity for this particular podcast, I think what keeps coming up for, for us in this conversation is your relationship with your body and feeling good. And so something just very simple and very basic that I want you to start anchoring in today, right now, is what is one thing that you can do to make your body feel good, feel better? Yes. One thing. And if you ask yourself that, yeah, you could just put your hand on your body and say, what would make you feel a little bit better? And I'm telling you, something's going to come through. Like, Maybe, you know, in terms of Helga, Helga is that like snarky voice in the back of your head. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she comes out first and be like, wow, you know, you know, it might just be some like snarky. Some might be nice. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. I just need a cocktail right now. That's all I need. You know, like she's going to, you know, that's Helga. And you could just be like, okay, that's like, let's be honest. That's really not going to do any good. Mm -hmm. So what would make me, and then the wisdom will come through of your body. That's where your body will come through after that. Sometimes Helga's first. Yeah. Depends on your mood. (laughs) Depends on your cycle, where you're at. Depends on how your day has been going. But you know the difference between Helga, who is this snarky little, you know, she's going to tell you something. Yeah. She's, she's going to be like, oh, well, a piece of cake would sound that that would make me feel better. You know, like that's going to be Helga. Right. And then Mm -hmm. you just dismiss her and be like, no, no, I'm asking my body, not Helga. And -hmm. then the wisdom of the body will come through and be like, man, I just like, I'm kind of thirsty. Like my, my mouth is dry. I don't even know if I drink and bring much water today or like, I'm tired. Maybe I can like sneak in a little nap or man, I haven't ate food in the last like six hours. Maybe I'll go get something to eat, you know, like, yeah, yeah, something will come through. So I want that to be your awakening activity for this particular podcast is just maybe put it on a sticky note, put it in your car, you know, have the conversation in your car, make that be your conversation time with your body of what will make me feel better right now. What's something Mm -hmm. that will make my body feel better right now. Mm -hmm. And it's just so simple. It's so simple, 
And like, that's, that's the end goal, as Aaliyah was saying, it's like, it really, can be that, simple. yeah, right. But it can be simple. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So any last, last words, Aaliyah? Um, I say, like, if you're at all interested, it's really such a great place to be. I'm just going to say that, like, the support in the sisterhood is amazing. The support of Nicole, the support of the mentors, we're all here for it. And it's a journey unlike any other. It truly is. It's just, it's a great place. Yeah. So. (laughs) I agree. I agree. (laughs) All right, sisters. Well, as always, when in doubt, ask your body. Ask your body. Bye. Ah, don't you just love Aaliyah? She is awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, please like or comment somewhere around this video or audio. It just helps boost our algorithm and reach more women. And we are actually offering a free masterclass right now called Resolution Reset. This is weight loss resolutions done right. So if you're feeling discouraged from your resolutions that you made at the beginning of the year and you want to find out a new way to goal set, we don't even like to call it goal set, we like to call it vision work, Um, this is a great masterclass that I've ran the last three years and women leave feeling so clear and excited and motivated about the future and the potential. So look around for around for that link somewhere around here, and you can also move on to the next episode where you will meet Wild Be Alive expert Ashley, where she shares her very unique journey with her body and weight loss and a very beautiful place that she ended up coming to because of her crazy journey. I can't wait for you to listen to this one. It is so good.